greater financial inclusion will enhance social empowerment, which in turn will increase economic development across countries. So we'll be discussing on financial inclusion. This means that individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs, such as payment, transactions, savings, credit, and insurance. Financial inclusion has been identified as an enabler for SDGs. G20 committed to advance financial inclusion worldwide and reaffirm its commitment to the implement of G20 high-level principles for digital financial inclusion. The World Bank Group considers financial inclusion a key enabler to reduce extreme poverty and boost shared prosperity. As per World Bank Group statistics, 1.7 billion unbanked adults worldwide as of 2017, and 1 billion unbanked adults that the World Bank Group has committed to enable to be reached. And also, 34 partners make commitments towards the universal financial access goal. These partners include banks, financial companies, and fintech companies. World Bank is a technical partner for 18 priority countries to develop national financial inclusion strategies, known as NFIs. And for the other countries with the financial inclusion commitments to the AFI Maya Declaration, which has been commenced in Mexico, Indonesia, Mexico, and Mozambique recently launched their NFI strategy with others to follow. IFC invested in innovative projects, namely, and financial in China, MasterCard, and LAPO in Nigeria in view of provision of greater number of accounts. Importance of financial inclusion is now widely recognized in building a strong foundation of a country's financial stability, which in turn will facilitate inclusive economic development. In this regard, upgrading financial inclusion concepts and efforts through the policy platforms require assessment and quantification of level of financial inclusion and careful standardization of the actual requirements of the economy and the individuals. There are mainly several dimensions of financial inclusion, which could be identified as access, usage, and quality. As per NFI survey conducted by CBSD, supported by IFC of World Bank Group in 2018, account ownership in Sri Lanka stands at 88%, which is higher than the South Asia average. Noticeably, it has been reported of having no gender disparity or any significant difference in account ownership among less advantaged segments of the population, including rural residents or low-income people. Sri Lanka also enjoys high level of bank branch penetration with bank branch density of approximately 16 branches per 100,000 adults as of end of last year. However, in contrast to the high literacy level of 92% or more than that among Sri Lankans, the low level of financial digital risk, which is recorded as 35%, has been recognized among certain pockets as an impediment to their universal achievements. Despite high levels of access, usage of accounts, and uptake of the, the other financial products and services such as mobile money, insurance, retirement schemes, and bond and equity instruments are modest. More importantly, Access to appropriate credit products from formal providers remains a significant barrier for both individuals and MSMEs. Although urban and industry MSMEs get better access to formal financial resources, small-scale village-based MSMEs are often denied of access to financial facilities in Sri Lanka. In this context, the formulation of the National Financial Inclusion Strategy of Sri Lanka is considered as a timely initiative 
bringing together all the key stakeholders for the first time to carry out a long term comprehensive and coordinated strategy for achieving financial inclusion. NFIS clearly defines a set of specific policy objectives that are centered around four key policy pillars. Number one, digital finance and payments, MSME finance, consumer protection, and financial literacy and capacity building. Enables for financial inclusion could be identified as infrastructure, data, policy regulations, and supervision. NFIS governance structure consists of National Financial Inclusion Council, and under that, management committee is there, which overlooks working groups, enablers, and secretariat. The significant improvements in the digital finance ecosystem, on the other hand, will be a boon for financial inclusion, as they facilitate significant cost efficiencies and viable delivery of financial services to the low-income individuals and small enterprises of the society. The compl complemented by a more conducive regulatory environment and necessary digital infrastructure enabling market players to deliver more innovative financial services. References used in these presentations are from the Global Index Database of World Bank Group, Economic and Statistics Report of CBSL, and CBSL Annual Report. Thanks for watching.